And that's why every mathematical function is transpiring. I've, I've discovered that numbers are machines. They're mechanical. You know? hmm. And the shape that they make is an energy device. And so I used numbers. To, I reverse engineered numbers themselves and found they were the ultimate coil, the ultimate motor. Well, I look forward to when we, I'll send you a lot more um, images. And I would like to pick um, out some of my star best students who made discoveries. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to send you some other documents or papers. And, uh, like there's Farron Thorpe, there's um, Professor Nelson um, on different topics. The topics are, and for instance, uh, Farron shows um, how a, a higher base system uh, makes a toroid. Um, Professor Nelson did work on the Great Pyramid. Shows that four interlocking toruses, rodent coils, make a, a pyramid. Really? Oh, yeah. Talk about that for a second. You know, there are people that think that the pyramids in on, on the Giza Plateau, for example, and even some of those in other parts of the world, were actually energy devices of a sort. Okay. If, how much time do I have? Like three or four minutes? To oh, shoot. We got, we, we, got, we got probably, let's see, we got uh, seven minutes. Okay, here it goes. All right. Okay. Now, I would not, I am, I am embarrassed because I, as much as I have no question that there's life on other planets and this and that, like you asked me to critique somebody's work, I declined. But when, but I have no choice. But to, when someone does something and accomplishes something and it's valid and it's true, I'm forced to come to the table. In this case, Professor Nelson took a book called The Keys of Enoch, written by J.J. Hertek. Yeah, I know it, Hertek, yeah. And he took a quote out of the book where Hertek says he went up into a spaceship. They were taken up, he was taken up by the aliens and he saw this huge grid of energy, of light through space. And he asked them what it was as he was looking out the window. And they said that's for the, responsible for the electromagnetic propagation of energy throughout the universe. And they gave him this code in the book, which was in the shape of like a seal of Solomon. It was 191. Anyway, and he took that symbol, and Professor Nelson literally put years and years into my work. Who's Professor it. Nelson, just real quick? Um, he doesn't want to be disturbed or contacted by people in the audience. He's a professor at the University of Hawaii. He's very famous in plant with the pathology. Okay. He's a, an editor of many a, a, a famous botanist journal. Okay. Uh, in his own right, his, he has done accomplishments based on my work. He wrote a paper, and what I'd like to do is we'll put that up on your website when we go over images and we start describing things. Yeah, please. Uh, it is a very, very heavy read. Uh, it's called the Philotaxis prime number SIF. He figured out how to predict using the growth of plants unknown prime numbers. Right on. That is cool. <laughs> Did I ever send that to you? No, but Have it's cool. I love because I'm a plant person. You know, I'm I'm way into botany. The work can be very intimidating when uh, if, when you see it, you will be it. It is. It's like coming across um. You know, like a hundred volume encyclopedia. It is a mm. major achievement of work, and it's not an easy read. But anyway, he took that out of that book, The Keys of Enoch, and he focused, and he discovered, he pieced the numbers together using this math, vortex-based mathematics, using what he had learned working together with me, and he filled in the numbers and the tiles, and he, I would never, I was blown away myself. Instead of it forming a single torus, it made four toruses at right angles where the... <laughs> where they intersected on their vertices was on the edge of the pyramid, it made the different X, Y, Z, the multiplication series, the doubling circuits, the gap space, 396, 693, were at right angles to one another. The shocker was is that the only number that didn't, uh, from my experience, I had to learn something new, was the capstone number, the number at the top of the center. It, technically, it should be the number two in all, with the right angle of the multiplication series. But it was the number one, which led me to the conclusion that there was um, two number ones. Hmm. It's real weird. Hmm. I don't know what to make of it. Wow. But um, that is weird because you know the capstone's always got this weird sort of 
uh, mythology about it, that it's separated and different than the whole rest of the pyramid and all that. It's the energy that you were just talking about, the propagation, the power. Man, and you oh can man. see it using, this, using it mathematically. So we can put up his illustrations and what he did I can send you that. So, I mean, I'd like to go over what other people have done with the work. I can send you the, the test results from Gila Packard, from Bob Emmerich, Materials Testing Division, when they confirmed, gave me certified results that I was essentially getting double the output mm -hmm. of the magnetic inductance. We can do other people's prototype coils. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm real happy to create a section on the website, you know, for all of this stuff. And, and I know people would be glad to dig into it and then to start to comment on it. It's a great place to archive maybe some discussion about it. So, so we'll talk more about that um, uh, off the air, but, uh, but so we'll definitely move forward with it. And then we'll do another show where you can walk us through the specific images that you want to, that you want to go through, okay? Thank you. All right. Well, um, closing words. What, uh, anything you'd like to say to finish up, Marco? Yeah. Um, it's, there's a prayer. I know it by heart. It sounds a little bit belligerent or, or confrontational, but it's a fun one. <laughs> Share it with us. It's one of the few ones I know by heart. It comes out of the Baha'i Scripture. All right. Okay. Be thou the people of hellfire, but be not a hypocrite. Be thou an unbeliever, but be not a plotter. Make thy home in taverns, but tread not the path of the mischief maker. Fear thou God, but not the priest. Give to the executioner thy head, but not thy heart. Let thine abode be under the stone, but seek not the shelter of the cleric. Thus doth the holy reed intone its melodies, and the nightingale of paradise warble its song, so that he may infuse life eternal into the mortal frames of men, impart into the temples of death the essence of the Holy Spirit and the heavenly light, and draw the transient world through the potency of a single word into the everlasting kingdom. Single word, that's what we started with, right? Exactly. All right, Marco, it's been a pleasure. And uh, I'll speak with you soon, and we'll continue to push this work forward, okay? Mike, you make it fun for me. I really have a good time, and, and it, it, it makes my work um, what it should be, just, you know, uh, enjoyable. Well, I'll, I'll, like I said, I, I appreciate what you're doing, and I'll do my best to help out with it as much as I can, okay? Thank you. Everybody, Marco Roden on the web one more time, www.marcoroden, R-O-D-I-N.com, and also www.rodenmath.com. And you can link over there from my site uh, and listen to this radio program as well as the other two that Marco and I have done together. I'll put all that stuff together on the thread on the forum that, we're, uh, that we've all been sort of visiting there if you've been over on the forum. But at any rate, we've got a whole bunch of stuff to add to that. We're going to create... A real interesting <clears throat> little uh, corner of the website with Marco's material and uh, have him uh, explain more of it to us. This is, you know, one of the problems. I mean, it, you, you only have so much time uh, to get into a particular thing. You try to cover as much as you can and get people interested and, uh, you know, give them a reason to go work further on their own, but even in, you know, two hours, which some people would say is a long interview, you know, it's really not a lot of time to go over, you know, your whole life's work. And uh, I appreciate the effort that Marco puts into, uh, you know, uh, trying to communicate it to us because it's not an easy thing to do. So anyway, thank you, Marco. As always, I appreciate the work and um, we'll be in touch. Everybody else, I appreciate you all listening to the program. I hope you enjoyed yourselves and I thank you for Listen, come on back next week. We will have the wonderful, remarkable, amazing Dr. John Sheliak. And uh, can't wait to have John on the air. We'll talk with him about what's happening in his world and uh, continue these remarkable conversations. We'll go right from Marco over to John Sheliak. In fact, uh, in, in strange ways, I imagine their work is sort of related. But uh, anyway, John Sheliak, one of my favorite people and a guy who's done amazing work for many, many years, will be on the program with us again next week. Uh, he made an appearance here just a couple months ago, so you might check out that earlier interview in the archives, and you can also check out these programs with Marco uh, that we did last year. Okay, everybody, stick around. we got the amazing Ruthie thingy coming up.